You cast on Sad Frog Boys yesterday. And they looked pretty good. And then on the other side, you got... Uh, uh, I don't really recognize it. Or, or a couple actually wing blade. Okay, that's a name that I recognize actually. Um, let's do this one. Okay. Let me see if I can find the. I got it. You got it. Okay. Let's jump into this one. Bean boys is already like nine one guys. It's <laughs> it's actually a stomp already. It's not a bean boys cast. Oh god, this. <laughs> This black that I see loading into this game. Jeez. Um, it just really doesn't want you to cast somebody other than Bean Boys. Valve's guiding you. Yeah. All right, so we're jumping into this one here. Sad Frog Boys, we cast them a little bit yesterday. They One of the couple of games that I think we did happen to jump into them, or maybe the day before it was. But point is, I have some history there. And overall, this game so far looking uh, looking pretty good. As uh, it's 4-3 to three right now for the Dire side. Uh, we have an Omni Knight in this game. That's fun to see. A different uh, hero of sorts. Klink's actually bottom lane. He's trying to escape here from danger. He's going to turn. Pops a strafe. Going for a turn kill onto the Rubik. Actually does have Omni Knight coming in. Who pops a repel on top of him. And Rubik, one auto attack away. He will go down. Almost holding his ground. Trying to maybe go for the turn. And actually could set up with the Impale. Yes. So definitely worth it, actually. To the Rubik in that case. Yeah. Just looking at the drafts here, it's it's definitely interesting. You, you see the Dire team got their hands on the Lone Druid, obviously the premium pick, and it doesn't look like anything was handed back to the Radiant side. None of the picks on Radiant are anything we even see in first phase normally. And these tend to be fourth, fifth pick type heroes, and trying to make a cohesive lineup out of it, I like the idea. Sand King with the, the Omni Nick Heal Bomb, being able to repel Klinks and letting him shotgun off a bunch of damage, or the PA when she goes in. They have the damage to win this game. It's just, can they have the execution? <clears throat> yeah, Marana is kind of one that talk about another hero that really has kind of died off of sorts. Had her, had her time there, but maybe I don't know if that's been kind of a talent tree thing where her talent tree isn't necessarily as strong as uh, as maybe others. But we do not see her much anymore. Pipe also got buffed severely, so we started seeing a lot more people pick up pipe. So then the caster Marana build was less effective. Okay. And it, uh, I mean, in the end, it was kind of one of those one off, I don't want to say meme builds, but it was a pocket pick that they pulled out, you know, in the starting at TI last year. And it kind of took the tournament by storm and then fell off pretty shortly after. Yeah. Had a, had a short run of sorts, you know, um, Kunkka, kind of another one that's definitely died off. And it's like the Kunkka Mirana where it's some of the tier, top tier picks for a while there. I know, you know, mixed with a Shadow Demon on top, kind of that whole synergy Radiant's as far as setting up the stuns. But, yeah, attack. not really seeing any of them. Shadow Demon, if anything, the only one maybe of those. Of course, that's with the Illusion still being very powerful. But, yeah, we see Marana here. So, we'll see some big plays, at least potentially, from the Marana as top lane. Going to go on the frog here in Slark. Not a frog. Close to one, though. Lone Druid. It's fish. It's more of a fish, yeah. Something like that. It's a reptile. Dyer's middle tower is he's not a fish. Is he a fish? Slark? I guess he is a fish, huh? He calls himself a fish in like every other voice line. Huh. Should listen to him more often. Well, sounds like a wise man. Lone Tree, yeah, what are you doing? Uh, oh boy, you're gonna get caught, buddy. He gets completely turned on right here. Now the Savage, we're gonna save him initially. It's not gonna be enough though. The final auto attack coming out. He gets killed. Epicenter going off of Rubik right here. Phantom Assassin, no Phantom Strike forward. We'll secure the kill on him. Now, Sand King, he's pretty far up, but Omni Knight heals being used and keeping everybody alive. Omni Knight will finally die, as I say that, and so does Murata. But now Sark's in trouble. Wow. Never mind the double kill at the end for Nyx with the Impale. And it's a cleanup. So much for everyone being alive. Yeah, Nyx bringing redemption to what should have been a lost team fight. Four for three and exchange. That's a huge pickup for Slark there, though. He got a lot of kills, a lot of assists there. Gets the first part of the Shadow Blade basically donated over to him. And at this point, he's in position to, to be a driving force in this game. That LD's positioning was so odd. He was so far forward and ended up just getting caught, essentially doing nothing. Yeah, he's, uh, I mean, the NPS obviously kind of caught him off guard, but why you're even up there in the first place is, of course, the, the critical point. So, uh... Keep an eye on the positioning there, and the future is kind of the advice to give. But he is level 10 now, the 175 attack range, so he's going to 
Take advantage of that, works his way to the jungle, building on that dragon land, so he is going a little bit more of that bulkier build. Which referring to earlier. Look at this Nyx, by the way. He's going right into the Ags after the uh, Arcane Boots. No Midas, I like no the blink. idea. I, I like it a lot. He doesn't really need to go blink in this game. They, they don't look to initiate on this Radiant team. You just want to be the counter initiators. You want to sit back and get a good turn with Savage Roar and Impale. Um, you know, Global Silence after they commit an all-in on you. But you really don't want to be the ones deciding when you go. Mm -hmm. So I, I like that idea because he can just tunnel up and get those super long range impales from wherever he happened to be burrowed. Seems pretty good. Nyx, he's setting up down here, but meanwhile over the shrine area, it's actually potential for an opening. Clink's going on by. Finds Lunger in. Definitely going to be making a fight happen right here. Phantom Strike in. Now Nyx Assassin is there by the Repel onto the Phantom, but that root going right on through it, so going to prevent that chase. Global Science, meanwhile, activate in the background. Omnite. He's the target that they want to kill first, and they are going to be able to despite the kill attempt at the last second. He goes down, but so does Rubik on the other side. However, the smoke now activated, and they're going to chase. Clink's going to be the prime target. If they can maybe stop him from TPing, they cannot. He makes his way out. Now, Mad King's here on Sand King. He's still trying to run, and he actually will be able to be slippery enough to escape himself. Oh, they find Pierre. P. He finds Silencer, whichever way you want to look at it, actually. And <laughs> Silencer dies first, and then P.A. just walks it off. Hmm. So first of all, this game is extremely aggressive with a Slark and a Lone Druid on the Dire team. I would expect them to kind of sit back till Lone Druid hits 15, till Slark gets Shadow Blade, but this is just bloodbath after bloodbath. The Slark though did avoid that entirely. He decided to rice out his full Shadow Blade. He is only 10 gold away at this point, and he made 1300 gold in two minutes. Quite a bit, Omni Knight. Can he get the heal up in time? He'll pop actually his ulti first with the Guardian Angel. That's going to be up to the same for now. The epicenter forcing Nick's assassin off right there. Yes, signs their support. The curse coming out. The stun through though. There's the setup that we're waiting to see here. The classic Sand King Marana. And they get the easy kill as a result. Silencer picked off by MKA, MKA here. Playing the clinks. And he'll go back to farming himself, but nice, uh, nice little exchange there. Not even really exchange. Nova winning that fight as they take the lead now. But kind of goes back to, yeah, being very aggressive here on this dire side as a whole. Despite uh, maybe not necessarily have the best makeup for that. Although I guess that's where Nyx comes into play, however. Yeah, the fact of the matter is if you can have a break-even fight this early with a lineup like this, it's very, very good for your your future game plans. They know Slark is here. Yeah, he's going to be exposed now, but PA is not. They know yeah, the PA is there as well. Oh, true. There. Yeah, they're going to jump him first, actually. Now with the leash on PA. However, he's going to go out of range. We'll so that, that last little fight in bottom, there was actually some intricacies there. Omni Knight, it looked like, you know, most people would think he should have just healed right away. Nyx had Carapace running, so if Omni had just straight healed there, the damage gets reflected back to him. He gets zero heal and he gets stunned. So repelling first was a very, very heads up play to make sure he didn't just kill himself. Huh. Yeah, it is smart, actually. Well played by Omni Knight, knowing the mechanics here. Real toxy. I see a huge ability to have, lasting for six seconds, seven seconds at level four. But yeah, they've they've changed that ability quite a bit, haven't they? It used to be a lot longer, I feel like. Yeah, it used to be uh, about a fifty percent uptime. Yeah. So it, it got nerfed a couple seconds either way. Oh, they're grouped up though, and they're pushing out this bottom lane. Lone Druid, of course, I'm going to lead the way with that. Has that Dragon Lance. You have Slark in the Shadow Blade, with Nyx ready to initiate. But Slark actually will port to the top lane. He's going for a kill on a Clinks. Let's see if he has any kind of vision. He does. The dust comes out, and now Clinks. He is in a lot of trouble right here. Can't keep up, though. Yes, the pounce, and there we go, the Dark Pact. Omni was so close to getting a heal off, yeah. which probably would have turned the whole thing. Meanwhile, though, bottom lane, Epicenter initiation coming out from Mad Kings, but there's no follow-up, unfortunately. Great idea. Perfect initiation, really, but without follow-up. Not so perfect in the end. So he goes down in the turn despite getting several low. The tower yeah, will yeah, survive. Entire team rotated top to commit to the Slark kill, which they did get. And now Potom here with the free cleanup. Oh, they did kill Slark. You're right. Okay. So, at least there's that in return. But I guess really big picture it ends up being a two for two, which isn't that horrendous. Because of the uh, Slark kill right there, as mentioned. But Clinks, he's coming back up, and he's going to have his own Dragon Lance now. So, yeah, Clinks is going to be able to a little beefier earlier on here. 
Talking about that potential earlier. He's not just going like straight death slate or anything like that. This should make my Although that easier. probably would be a thing eventually here. Yeah, eventually you will, but you, you have some requisite items you need to pick up first just to make sure you can contribute in this game. Definitely action, potentially going to be keeping up here. Repels put up on a Phantom Assassin. He's going in. There we go, the dagger, a couple of auto attacks. Gets the coup de grace at the last second. That with the Desolator, of course. Plenty of juicy damage. To drop the Rubik there, but we see some response from our dire side. Another Repel put up. Can they actually do the coup Curse comes out. The slow as a result. Omni Knight, it's not going to get away from that. Middle tower has been and denied. Did I have a lane meanwhile by Slark in the middle tower? So this game though, 14 to 14. We're 18 minutes into the game. We have 28 hero kills here. Not afraid of very, action. Very, very bloody game compared to someone that we saw earlier. We had that 20 kill game in 45 minutes. But this one, this one definitely getting a little bloodier. The Lundred's closing in on that level 15 talent that he's been waiting so long to get. And Silencer finally you know, cleared the level 6 mark. We haven't seen Global really be used effectively yet, but in the next team fight, if he can find where Sand King is and stop the Epi with Global, it should put them in a really good position to win the fight. Mm -hmm. Rubik actually has a Ghost Scepter queued up. It looks like, I mean, he has the gold for it now, but is that is that even better over, say, something like a Blink Dagger here for the Rubik? I, I, he's just scared of PA deleting him. And it's your one way to stop that from happening. Most of what PA puts out is all uh, physical. So if you can get a Ghost Scepter off, then the PA does nothing. And you can kind of walk away safely. So I think it's just fear of getting deleted. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to dagger on into Slark right there, slowing him down. But no follow-up, just simply harassing and spending efficient farm, ideally. Let's look at that Ags on Nyx, meanwhile. Again, he's got a very early Ags here. He's going to sit in that burrow and... Try to set up and hope that they come in the uphill, but he's popping the Vendetta, gonna be going in. Looking to jump on the PA, but a nice Phantom Strike at the last second. If he doesn't use it right there, that could be a dead PA. And he makes his way out before the catch is successful. And Mirana's pushing out the top lane. Meanwhile, speaking of Ags, she actually almost has hers finished. Yeah, once that Ags gets picked up, her farm accelerates rapidly. The biggest fear that I have in this, and that we see frequently from these Mirana's getting a fairly early Ags, they don't wait until they get one or two more items. If you wait until you get Blink, or you wait until you get an E-Blade, or something along those lines, you're so much more effective than with just the naked Ags. And if you start going for team fights immediately after getting the Ags, if you lose one or two of those, you get stuck on that item forever. Yeah. Stuck for a while, so we'll see how they uh, are able to respond off of that Wing Blade here playing the Mirana. Another 50 goldies, she will have it finished. Going to finish up these mini Mud Golems here. As Klinx is going to go hunting, but again, no Desolator, no really amp damage here. Does have the extra range of the Dragonlance, and actually is building into the BKB next. I find that almost a little odd, considering you have an Omni Knight teammate here. Yeah, that means the Repel is going to go in PA every fight. They want to make sure this PA, who's super far ahead, gets off all the damage she can in a team fight. Slark looking to catch up to Klinx, but and pretty hard when he has that Skeleton Walk activated. See with that bonus move speed running nearly 500 move speed here, so he will be able to make his way out. But yeah, going definitely more of a defensive mindset as they're smoked up in the middle lane meanwhile. But action, despite it being plenty in the last, <laughs> for the first really like 18 minutes here, these last couple of minutes has kind of died down. But as I say this, the ulti activated from Rana, and they're running in. Clinks wants to break out with a fire here, going for science, or he gets jumped up or pulled up basically by the uh, Rubik right there. The counter, though, as Sansa is picked up in the background, too. Yeah, Slark, nice job with the Guardian Angel the last second, helping to save Sand King. Slark unable to finish the job, and a two for nothing on the supporting cast, though. Nick's just sitting in that burrow, but only so much he can do. Yeah, too little, too late. It was really depressing for the Dire team to have that last Searing Arrow kill off Silencer. If he had lived from that, he gets Global off in this fight, and it could be very different. But instead, Radiant gonna run away with this pretty quickly. Sark, however, going to take advantage of Omni Knight, getting a little too far up, as well as the Sand King, and the Global Science Corps assisting with that. Can they get PA? Yes, they as soon can. As I say that, they're feet away like <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I was just thinking the Why same thing. Why take your free power when you can run past it and die? You can dive past it and go for those hero kills, those tempting hero kills. Yeah, no, that was a 
A little silly. So much for that uh, really pulling the head here. I mean, you look at the net worth, actually. Lone Druid and Slark are actually in a decent spot here. Comfortable one and two. Mm -hmm. yeah, very solid. And the Nyx is, is a little bit deceptive because he's finished an extremely impactful item. That net worth is tunneled in solely on that Ags, which is going to give him huge presence in this game. Yeah. Mad King obviously has his blink dagger here on the uh, on the Sand King. Level 2 Epicenter using that. Oh, they, he didn't use the last fight, actually, because the Epicenter is still on cooldown. Only about 20 more seconds, but we'll have that to come to play. Perhaps at a possible Roshan as you see the Dire Side making the way in there. Lone Druid, of course, leading it. And Slark, where is Slark? He is heading over there. Picks up an Arcane Rune on the way. Trying to get there in time. But speaking of Mad Kings on that Sand King, again, he has a chance. He's going to go for Slark, actually. Yeah, Sentry was here in the middle lane. He pops a Shadow Dance immediately. Gets the turn kill despite the Epicenter. You wanted out of here, didn't you? And so much for him. As now five versus four here. Surprised they're not yeah, just committing I'm, to Roshan. Omni Knight didn't just heal Sand King first. He threw the Repel on right as the Sand King died. So now Repel's on cooldown. Didn't heal him up there. Kind of a, an awkward skill sequence there that got punished. And now they're going to kind of reset into the Roshan. But again, a little surprised they're not just... They didn't just go for this right after, because without Sand King, they lose so much of their initiation here, of course. But they're still kind of just chilling. I, I I, mean, oh, his Spirit Bear is dead. I guess that's what they're waiting for. No, it wasn't dead. What am I saying? Like, he was just regening, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure why they, they've been holding off so long. It might just be fear and wanting to see if they can see somebody with all these Sentry Wards they have placed. Maybe they could get an extra pick off and then take it a little safer. But not committing up to it, but Sand King is alive. He's a long ways away. Yeah, but uh, if Sand King really ends up having an impact in this fight, only themselves to blame. The Spirit Bear blocks the stun from the arrow actually coming out of the Global Science. And then back on the catch, Omni Knight, of course. He's going to die pretty quickly. Now PA in a horrible spot. He, too, is going to fall. So Roshan goes down. The eight is picked up by the Slark. And that was the worst time, in a, obviously, especially since he couldn't steal it. Coming out from the Radiant side. Top lane, Marana. She's going to now deal with the Slark, or by deal, I mean, probably die to him. As, yeah, with that leash, you ain't running away from that. So now we see the dire side pulling ahead quite a bit here after that fight, especially. Huh. Lone Druid, he almost has, uh, I guess he's going to the Eye of Scotty here next. Yeah, it's the tanky build here. It makes him have a ton of HP. He's very hard to go on. And he gets so much damage off that talent. It, there's really not a need for much more. Got the next assassin right here. He's just hiding in that burrow, taking a little bit of damage, but obviously the easy tower kill on the Yang. Kling's kind of running around. This this is where I go back to this Kling's build, though. It's to me, it just it doesn't feel like the the correct build. Uh, maybe I, I'm not saying ever, but he kind of they have an Omni Knight protection. I understand that you want to use a repel on the PA, but it just feels like his damage is going to be. So, you, you like Kling's because he's a pickoff artist, and if he's going. More of a defensive build with now the BKB. I mean, Dragonlance, yes, it has a mix of offense, of course, but I don't know. You see what I'm saying? Like, I feel like we just went, like, straight Desolator. Like, he's going to be picking off these supporting casts quickly. Yeah, I understand what you're but. saying. I, I think it's the difference of when you're talking something like that, though, it's whether three or four arrows is going to kill Silencer or Rubik. Like, is the one extra arrow it's going to take worth the Dragonlance's range increase and the HP it provides? or like the BKB to guarantee you're gonna get those on us off. I can see the logic on both sides, but I think in this game, they don't need him to be this glass cannon that's shotgunning damage. That's your PA. Yeah. I think they want him to be a little more stable, make sure he can get to the back line and actually do something about them. And a build like this lets him build defensively enough to do that. Oh, next assassin pushing out the bottom. He's trying to finish that blink dagger now, and especially already having the Yags. Definitely could be a prime pick up here can set up some uh jumping in and using that spiked carapace of course and aoe stun which could be fun and the impales on top so yeah gonna be great for that positioning the eye of scotty almost finished on lone druid he mentioned it's kind of the, the tankier build so not only is he gonna be dealing plenty of damage but good luck killing him as well slark has the silver edge finish and is also going in eye of scotty actually <laughs> so both of their yeah. cores yeah, just large amounts of stats for a Slark. It lets him just be a frontliner and, and click things constantly in the team fight. And adding bulk HP that still gives damage stats is really nice for the ult. This is kind of interesting. I mean, they killed the Nyx. He got a little too comfortable. Now Slark finally gets here in time. 
But uh, down goes Silencer, now the Guardian. Angel protecting, Lodra gets picked off, and now Slark, he's hiding in that Shadow Dance. As soon as that wears off, though, yeah, he needs to worry about getting away. He'll pounce out. The arrow, ooh, he has to sidestep it, but now it's going to allow them to collapse on him. And that's the Aegis popped. A very sloppy fight here, honestly, by the tire side, getting picked off in a couple of different areas. Slark was here late, unfortunately. Now they do get the turn kill onto the Sand King. It's Rubik nearby, assisting right here. So maybe this is something. How that goes down? Slark will finally fall, though, and now Rubik's going to be found. And the jig is up, although he will be able to TP away. Wow. I mean, that was... That was chaotic. These fights are going back and forth so much. The coup de gras there, crit Lone Druid and basically one-shot him. He he couldn't even react to that with the Savage Roar. So, unfortunate way to go down if you're the Lone Druid, but a little too close to the fight instead of using that massive range to play from the back line a little more. And yeah, honestly, still anybody's game at this point, 27 minutes in. <clears throat> Rubik actually working on his own axe right here. That He's trying to finish up, get that more efficient spell steal as a result. But uh, it's going to be a ways away before, of course, that happens. Again, the Blink Dagger, Nyx actually has enough gold for it, though hasn't bought it just yet. Probably going to go to the side shop here and make that purchase. Gem just bought by Rubik, I saw. Of course, great item to have against the likes of a Klinks especially, so it's good that they have that now. Um, Phantom Thanks. Assassin, how has he been progressing? It does have a Skull Basher to go with that Vlad's and the Death Slater and the Abyssal Blade. I think he needs on. to look for an, uh, a BKB before he finishes out this full Abyssal Blade. He's struggling to stick to targets. Sure, he got the quick little one-shot on Lone Druid that last fight, but in clean fights where there's actually like a front line and control and everything's set up properly, he's been struggling to get anything done, and BKB would uh, alleviate a lot of those problems. Mm -hmm. So I've Scotty's though, have been finished now. You got Lone Druid picking up his, Slark. And in the works of one, he's, that's one of the ultimate orbs. So it's going to be a little bit longer for him, but you talked about the last fight, how Lodrid essentially got picked off very quickly by PA in the background. Now having the full eye of Scotty ideally will help with that. And, you know, he's getting that level 20 talent here in the near future. So once he does, if he happens to get picked off quickly, that's minus 40 seconds on the resurrection, which will be nice to have. The top secondary, though. Being pushed in is the dire side. It looks like they're just going to give this up pretty freely right here. Unless they have fortification. Yeah, they do. So they're running on over. So maybe not as free. Kind of an odd choice to dire's fort. The tower's so low that they're not going to react in time. Oh. Well, they're kind of well, trying to. Yeah, Spirit Bear gets caught by the air on the back on Rubik, but he repels himself actually. And he stole the Guardian Angel coming out from Omni Knight. And now Slark trying to live the Shadow Dance pop, though. He's keeping it go back in. Feel a little more comfortable, but with that Guardian Angel still up, finally wearing off now. And he's looking to pick off in the background, but they pick off Nyx meanwhile, and now we have Lundry needing to run away. Rubik meanwhile hiding in the sandstorm, going to Blink Dagger out. Actually managing to live, Sansa going the other direction. But that nearly one shot right there from the PA, double kill. And yeah, it did feel like an awkward timing, and well, works out for the Radiant. Clark definitely showing his weaknesses as a hero here. If he can't sit and actually beat down on a target and start building up those Essence Shift stacks and using the ult a little more offensively, he's doing nothing in these fights. That entire fight, he was spent running around, ulted defensively so he didn't die to PA during the Guardian Angel, and never got anything done. So, just a little bit of a problem with the hero itself. Uh, he could look to pick up a Diffusal instead of the Scotty here just to strip off the Guardian Angel, but still looking pretty committed to the Scotty idea. At the bottom lane, speaking of Slark, yeah, again, the Scotty just around the corner. It's it's going to at least happen for that first. But, yeah, something like that Diffusal. It'll be interesting to see if uh, he just goes to that next. you got to figure that's something that maybe he will be keeping in mind now. But his last couple of fights have gone unable to kind of stick on those appropriate targets. But, yeah, that Guardian Angel clearly causing issues. And you see Omni Knight, by the way. It's not like he has the most farm either. That's just the thing with the hero. He doesn't necessarily need a massive amount of farm. Simply what he has here. I mean, an Aether Lens is definitely helpful as well, but... Yeah, uh, almost every item you'd want to go first is all about making sure he's in range to cast stuff. It's either Aether Lens, Blink, or Staff. You know, anything that gets him towards where he wants to be. But the PA now in huge trouble. Yeah, got to get caught at the Ancients, actually. He does not have a buyback. They cannot react to that in time. The BKB popped by Klinks. He has a repel on him as well. There we go with the initiation of Sand King as well. The epicenter, they take out Nyx, but again, the Shadow Dance from Slark now standing his ground against MKA. On that Klinks, a Dark Pact trying to run him down. The pounce on him, but he's just split up from his teammates over here. 
and Sark's going to be picked off. Meanwhile, Marana in the background, keeping them distracted, and will fall to the support seat, however, as, oh, that's a triple kill, though, for Klink's coming out. Also picking off the Lone Druid over here. So, very un the split fights here. And distractions are, are baiting them out to areas that they, they, sh they shouldn't be in. And now Rubik, oh no, that's a greedy steal. He'll get it, but could be run down here. Never mind. He's good. Well. well I mean, not great start to that fight. PA got eliminated before anything was able to come off. Lone Druid unfortunately walked into the arrow. He was trying to block it with his bear and move his own hero out. And he kind of sidestepped around and ate the arrow. And uh, he couldn't get any damage in once Sand King initiated. So put the team on the back foot a little bit right away after that PA pick. And really, they just crumbled. And now Klinks has that Chrysalis. The Bloodthorn. Going to be coming up, it looks like, as he has the Orchid lined up ready to go so that's going to be a lot of amp damage of course speaking of the you know, talking about earlier with this build a little bit more defensive it felt like but now with the the blood thor coming along that's going to be very efficient damage coming out as yeah, they cannot get there in time as up oh, lone druid getting caught again and clink's going to try to finish the job the root though coming on the back of that dagger wow the range was absurd right there they also <laughs> catch nix Jeez, and uh, now this go this damage out. output's so insane from the two cores here on the Radiant. You've got this Clink's just not necessarily bursting anyone down, but throwing these these high damage arrows from so far away. And then your PA is your spike damage. Just give the Nyx there entirely. Put him at 10% off of one dagger. Get the Aegis to the uh, to the Phantom Assassin here. And there we go, Nikki Cool. Feeling pretty good, is gonna group up with the team as bottom lane Marana. I guess she was just trying to do some split pushing. Leaves herself open to getting jumped, however. So she'll go down, but gonna join up with the team in about 45 seconds. Once uh, once she's back up. So yeah, if you're the Radiant side, per perhaps wait for her to resurrect here. And then group up and look to make that push. Maybe finish the blood throwing on Clinks as well. Probably gonna be- Yeah, they, they definitely could. I, I think they have enough here to start looking at going uphill. Uh, as long as the Sand King hits a decent initiation, they don't even need the epicenter anymore. They're so far ahead in item progression that a good blink burrow on two or three should end the fight before it even starts. Mm -hmm. Ooh, double damage rune. Always nice to see, especially with a hero like PA. Look for some big numbers. To be coming out right here. Got the double damage, got the Aegis, so he's not going to be feeling scared. He has an Omni Knight on top of that to support. So this PA. He is going to look to wreck some faces, and he's going to find some faces very shortly. Nick, so oh, blinking away just in time, but is it enough? No, it's not. He is dead. The 1490 crit right there, just a little bit of overkill. So, and the chase will continue. You see, they're just uh, they're just all running, man. I don't think they'll be able to do anything about it, but it's it's pretty funny. Yeah. Oh, actually, Slark. Okay, he's going to sneak on by. He would so. instantly lose that if he tried to go one on one. Yeah, no, there's. That would be silly. So double damage, it's getting close to wearing off right here, but he'll use it a little bit longer to push the tower, although the fortification will stall that. Dagger in the background, who if that was a crit, that would've been fun. Arrow, oh, that's gonna go on by. But easy tower kill on the siege, what can they do? Nyx is dead, he's definitely kind of the counter pusher of sorts, especially with that ax, but both racks are gonna fall. And they go right towards the top. So you obviously give it up one's fine, but give it up two just freely. You can't really be doing. Yeah, not while you side. have every ultimate up. Got to try something. Slark going right for Omni Knight, the prime target. But there comes that Ghost Scepter. And now F uh, Phantom Assassin is standing his ground. Remember, he has the Aegis. He is taking some good auto attacks from the Lone But out comes the Guardian Angel. And the heals on top of that. And now Slark is still trying to pick off that Omni Knight in the background. He finally is going to be found the arrow. He pops the Shadow Blade. He will stay alive. Nobody dead, actually. Try to hold it since I say that. Finally, they pick up Nyx Assassin. And MKA on that. Klinks is on the run. Omni Knight will finally go down. So Lone Druid is starting to do some work now. Now Phantom Assassin, though. He's going to be focused on. No Omni Knight to support. He will go in and take out Rubik right there. He has the Aegis still, remember, though. So he's going to come back up. Can he get some big crits is the question. Yeah, probably not. Yep, he's going to fall. Triple kill for the Lone Druid. And they'll Starting to get face. slightly punished for not having BKBs. Their lack of control in the fight. In the, like, I know PA wants to be repelled, but Omni Knight didn't get a great repel off in that fight and then got pushed out. Like, Omni was threatened, had to run away, worry about his own life, and the PA got controlled so hard in the rest of that fight. 
I think Slark also distracted quite a bit right there in the background. He, uh, yeah, him not dying was huge. Yeah. He managed to get out of the fog line and, and got the Shadow Blade off and the gem wasn't nearby. So, very, very nicely done by him, giving his team a second shot at this game. Did still cost them a Pararax in the middle lane and the Tier 3 top, though, so... While they won the team fight, unless they can force a buyback or something here, still a pretty nice lead for, uh, is it Nova? Is it Nova, yeah. Nova over here versus Sad Boy Frogs. Sad Boy Frogs. Oh, Sad Frogs. Frog Boys. Maybe that's what it is. Okay. One of those two. Slarky's going in. The F Blade to the face right there. Is that Marana's, I'm guessing? Yeah. Yep. That's the F Blade now, but Slark dropping about half life. There we go. The Diffusal delivered, by the way, so. Has that now to help fight against the Zomni Knight and keep on them. Trying to really at least get a tier 3 tower out of this. Not going to happen, though. Resurrecting a little too quickly, and they will fall back as a team. Get some good damage out, though. MKB being worked on by Lundrid. Yeah, he was really able to be that turn in the background last fight and couldn't really do much about it. So now with an MKB thrown on there, that's definitely a lot of damage. Going to be vulnerable, too. A lot of Ghost Scepters in this game, I'm noticing, too. I mean, it's very good in this game on both sides. Both sources of damage from both teams here are mostly physical. You've got Slark and Lone Druid, and you have PA and you have Clanks. All of them, Ghost Scepter just destroys them. The one answer to the Ghost Scepter is the Diffusal Blade, but the Dire team seems to have a huge aversion to that. Slark finally picked one up after that last team fight, yeah. so... That could change the game a little bit. Being able to just purge whoever you're going on as soon as that Guardian Angel comes off could be the difference maker. Oh, the hunt in the jungle. The Marana ultimate activated. So Slark going to run right into them, actually. They have any kind of detection. Nyx going to stun it first. Now they do have the stun onto Slark on top of this. There's a throw up in the air of the Ill Scepter from the Sand King, though. Global Science coming out. Slark in the background. Guardian Angel going to be forced out. The epicenter not really doing the most damage. Finally stuns through. Did it get stolen? Oh, no. And now we got the counterplay, actually, as they kill the Sand King right there. Marana now used her S play. Nuke not enough for a kill herself. And Omni not going to be picked off in the background, too. Phantom Assassin finally getting in. But again, it's just too late, it feels like. He needs to play defensive now, him and the Clinks. And Phantom Assassin should not be able to escape out of this, most likely. Clinks also getting caught, by the way. Did they clean them up? It's a five yeah, for nothing five right off. there. That was such a huge Guardian Angel steal off the Rubik. Like, the Rubik made such a hero play in that fight. That's what he stole. Okay, I thought he stole the epicenter when that first. No, he stole GA Angel. and instantly okay. hit it at the same time Omni did. So essentially, they both had to stare at each other for you know, six seconds. Yeah. That's... Eight seconds, level three. That's eight yeah. seconds, jeez. Yeah, no, that's... Uh... And doesn't even Axe, too? Yeah, he does. Or he... And so it... It made it so that Slark had time to recover. When those two GAs both came out, Slark was at about 10-15% HP. He kited to the back of the fight, and he just he ducked around in the shadows, regained all his health, and came back in full. And it really just sealed that fight for them. Yeah. Going for the tower once again. MKB being delivered, I believe, to the lunge route here. As, yeah, there we go. Buffs up and going in for the easy tower kill, and now going for the racks. Tanking, of course, going to try to stall as much as possible. Spear Pair is dead. He doesn't have a resurrection, actually, for it just yet. The biggest deal in the world, but I'll have to keep that in mind. They're going to stun common. A Lundra. Lundra could fall right here, actually. As there's a counterplay, though. The big counter stun from Rubik, actually. I believe that's what that was. At least that's what it looked like. And double kill for Sark. They did kill Lundra to the end, but this racks now. It's going to be open. Did Autumn forget she had an E-Blade when she blinked on the Lundra? Because... <laughs> now use it. What, yeah, no, she used it at the very end to clean okay. up the kill on LD, but if she'd used that before nukes, it would have been a lot cleaner. Not sure what the deal was there then, Ooh, but Phantom is, Oh, yeah, he's in trouble. And I don't... Does he have a buyback? It's the Shrine of Use coming out. He does, yeah. He does have a buyback. He's able to Phantom Strike away. The last second gets another Shrine of Use. Go for the turn kill on a Rubik. He gets that, but he is going to die when it's all said and done. They are really diving at them, but they do get the middle, of course, taken out as far as the racks, and then Klinks is able to pick off. Slark has so here. many stacks right now. That's in shift 29, you're right. He is feeling comfortable. A little too comfortable, perhaps. Yeah, he'll need to pounce away. And, oh, he's still in trouble, though. Another Dark Pact. Going to be good for now. Another pounce. Potom's Ag's procced right before the blink, so okay. no damage to follow up there, unfortunately. But Clink's kind of being brave. 
And a little too brave. Oh, out comes Hammer Break from the Silver Edge, and down goes Clinks. The Dark Pack is helping as well. Now, Ruby gets picked up back there. The Sonsar, excuse me. And the Dark Pack not going to save him this time around, so actually Sark will end up falling despite getting that turn, till, uh, turn kill on a Clinks. All right, this is the Game of Throws. This, this is a sloppy game. <laughs> this is <laughs> extremely, extremely sloppy. Uh, quick update for everyone. Bean Boys did stomp through their game as well. Having made round to 16, they will be in tomorrow. Hey. Uh, slice, and dice, slice and Dice spot net still going on. Uh, slice and Dice actually down by a pretty hefty margin. So. Oh, okay. We'll see if they can uh, pull anything back there. GI, the finalist from yesterday, did go ahead and win as well. So they'll be moving forward. Slice and Dice is down. Do we maybe want to jump over to that game? Well, no. We'll, we'll stay here. We'll stay here for now. We'll, we'll, we'll try to finish out with this one here. Unless it just becomes too much of a <laughs> frustrating throw fest. Oh, throw uh, fests are fun to watch. That, uh, hopefully not a long pause here. He said Slice and Dice. Let's see. Spotnet. 19.15, okay. 34 minutes in right there. And it looks there. like it's 20, It's actually 21.19 in real time, so it okay. looks like Slice and Dice wanted to fight to pull it back a little bit. So definitely a close game right now. A close game, you say? All right. Uh, man, we do need to go on a break, too. <laughs> huh. Well... I think I think we may do that. So let's run a pause here now too. Let's go on a break, guys. I know I hate doing this, especially right at this time, but it has been a, actually a little bit like two two and a half hours here. Um, we're gonna go on a short break, and we'll come back. And depending on how this one's maybe look, we might jump into that other match though, as well. So sit tight, guys. The European coverage will continue here. We'll be right back. You're gonna be on the summit. Stay tuned, guys.
All right, we should be back here. Welcome back, guys. It's a short break, so obviously we're out of the pause now, and a little, a little stuff happened more, so the action continues here. And jumping back into this game, we got Nova versus Santa Frog Boys here in this uh, round of 32 matchups. So these two teams trying to advance on to day number two. And right as we get back into it, Omni Knight's actually going to be jumped right after they get the Aegis on a PA. Omni Knight's dead right off the bat, so no Guardian Angel, but PA goes and they take out Slark immediately. He buys back, though, immediately. Mad King's missing that epicenter. But it looks like they are going to retreat somewhat, want to take advantage of these. They just maybe wait for their Omni Knight to be back up. Because again, he's dead for 70 seconds with no buyback. Sand King, though, is going to get caught and be a final casualty here. So we're jumping back into it. And now we got uh, the dire side. I mean, they could take advantage of this Omni Knight being down, perhaps. Are you back with me? Yeah, as soon as I unmute my microphone, there tends to go. help. But yeah, what an insane counter Burrow strike there from Rube. He stole it pretty much in line and, and threw it right where Sand King threw his, barely clipping him on the end, resulting in a pretty big pickoff, forcing a buyback out of him. Yeah. And now Omni Knight dead for another 30 seconds, so going to be very difficult uh, to push in, though, even with him dead. So they choose to just fall back and continue to take the resources. I mean, you see the so, net worth lead that they've had. Yeah, and in the downtime, I do need to point out we uh, had a couple buybacks while we were not on this cast. Slark was forced to buy back. Marana has bought back a few minutes ago. Rubik and Omni Knight. So buybacks down on both sides. One team fight could make or break this game at this point. Yeah, that's always going to be important in the later parts here. So full on retreat though for the Sad Frog Boys, and uh, Slark uh, has a nine second BKB now. So did use the first charge of that, but still plenty of duration left. And gonna ideally help them stick on targets. A level two Diffuso also picked up on top of that. Very good to see them yelling around Lone Druid. Progress being made. He has 6,200 gold saved up, man. It looks like he has a Satanic on Lone Druid. Uh, did they catch somebody up here? No. Yes, they did. Slark caught him. Now Marana. Can he somehow get out of this? The ulti. It looks like that is enough. No detection for Slark. Yeah, Slark slotted out his gem and hasn't had room to put it back in, so. Unfortunately, that's on the Nyx, not the Sark, and Murata will squeak away with her life. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the similar rage choice on Lone Druid makes sense here. You mean you mean Satanic? <sighs> <laughs> um, I don't mind it at all. I think it's fine. It's a very very nice item for him because his health pool is not super high, so a Satanic will pop him back up extremely quickly. And it does give him a little bit more bonus HP with that 25 strength from the Reaver. So I like the idea. I think it's fine. It's a pretty standard final item for most right-clicking carries. I think he could look to go the Hurricane Pike, though, first. It's a very inexpensive item. And he already has the Dragon Lance. It would help him push himself away from PA. Yeah. And maybe stop her from sticking to him quite as well. I'll take that. Double stun here on a Marana, but there's a lift. They have enough follow-up here. Sark running on in. Can he get maybe a pounce? Yes, he can. It connects, and down goes Rana. She's actually dead for 120 seconds. No buyback to be had. That's one of those buybacks you mentioned earlier. A minute and 20 seconds, really, for uh, the buyback. So it's basically going to be coming up right as she resurrects. And with Marana dead, this is definitely giving them an opening. Five versus four. Yeah, this is one of those situations, if you think you can get a good initiation and go on the PA or the Clinks, Nyx could make a brave burrow strike into the base and burrow right away, or like a blink into a burrow in the base and just post up there and start laying off stuns, get that really long stun that you get when you spike carapace while you're burrowed. It ends up being a huge, very long stun, and then you impale after. Oh, they go into PA now. Again, PA has an Aegis, so fighting into an Aegis always got to feel scary. Launcher just melts in the background. Again, we know they have so much damage, but it's still impressive every time with the PA and the Clink. So Launcher dead just like that. They also ended up picking off Nyx Assassin Rubik. Is he able to TP away at least, but it, I don't, it just seems like it even keeps catching them off guard. Even with Lundred, he had the Satanic, but it didn't matter. Dropped way too fast. Yeah, it's just bizarre. It's so much damage. And with the way Bloodthorn works, you know, every auto they hit on him is going to be a crit. And that's guaranteeing PA crits when Lundred's Bloodthorn. 
and the fact that your, your Clinks is just amplifying the damage so much, putting out an insane amount of damage coupled with that MKB. The Lone Druid satanic there and still couldn't steal any life. He died so fast. Yeah. No chance for him at that point. Slark, he's just going to continue to farm at the bottom lane. I mean, you look at the inventory of Slark right here. It's not really – it's in that backpack use perhaps, but MKA – Oh, he was tempted to maybe open on a science or go for a quick kill. Not it enough, though. And he'll stay safe for now. Um, what do we think of Slark? Is, is is Refresher potentially something? I mean, a double Shadow Dance? And double BKB. Yeah, that's true. So there, there's possibility there if he wants to go that route. He could look at ditching the Echo Saber for something a little more substantial. Uh, Butterfly being a, a notable one, although there is an MKB on the Clinks. The prize is uh, He's got a, a tough choice to make because his gold's starting to stack up. Bots and Moonshard are also still options if he likes his current items. All right, so definitely still room to make up here. So for the Slark, not uh, not not worried that he has a lot more farm to farm time here by any means. Of course, Moonshards as well. Uh, Forty-two intelligence stolen by the way on Silencer. That's <laughs> being pointed out he's here. He's smart. He is a very smart Silencer this game. And he's level 24. What is he going to have 25? Curse slow or attack range? Probably going to get the curse slow, right? I mean, he's just not yeah. a carry, so. Yeah, Give definitely. If he had gotten a little more farm and maybe one or two items, you might look to go the attack range just because it's safe, but yeah. curse slow is huge. 25% across a huge AoE. Definitely the option he's going to go with. Yeah, we have not really looked at any of the level 25, so I'm kind of going through that right now. Oh, five break. Rubik's is probably the most interesting one. They catch Clinks, by the way. Clinks down to half life right off the bat. The global science on top of this. However, in the background, that's Lone Druid being bursted down yet again. So he goes down with both cores on either side, going down at least a couple of them. Now, Slark will be sitting on top of the Omni Knight. Guardian Angel already popped out, though, the stun on through with an epicenter. The Nyx locked down on a Phantom Assassin, meanwhile. And he's going to open with that Vendetta, the leash on him from the, uh, the Slark, actually. And not much more can be done to save his life right there. So now you have Mad King's on the sanking in the background. He's going to be stunned out, though. Looks like Rubik stole that Burl Strike yet again. These buybacks aren't in good shape. No. So, uh, Clink's expected to get at least one kill in that team fight. Did not get it, so he's about 100 short of his buyback. And I don't know if Dyer can push fast enough to actually make something come of this, but they, they have to try at this point. Yeah, why not? I mean, you got Sark heading right down the middle lane. I mean, I guess they can maybe try to put some pressure on the Tier 4 towers or just sneak on in and go for one of the top or the bottom. Yeah, you can just absolutely back for a tower at this point. At the very least, you force PA's buyback, and then you just run away because you yeah. force PA buyback. And he has 24 Essence Shift charges currently, so he does have a bit. There's the Omni Knight buyback, but yeah, PA is the one you're a little more concerned about. Going to be an easy range rack go Get them either axe. Okay, no. I'll gladly take this. PA is not going to be buying back. I don't know why. I mean, at this point, they understand one team fight can make or break this game. Maybe she feels like if she buys back, then it could end the game for them. Yeah. And we'll probably have to buy back here. You can't really give away Megas. But trying to wait till it's more in line with the Clinks and Sand King coming up. There we go. Buyback finally happens. They're going to be resurrecting soon, but at least the tower is going to fall. You see a fear, meanwhile, in Omni Knight as he jumped on an MPA, jumping on himself, gets the quick kill yet again on Lundrid. Seems like I've said that before. Yeah, this is exactly what I was hoping for. She waited until the team was ready to go. Didn't just buy back all on her own and potentially get picked. So, although it cost them a lot, they lost an extra set of racks and a tier three. Probably the the highest percentage chance to keep them in a winnable game. You look at the net worth chart there, dipping down of about nearly a ten thousand net worth lead. I mean, it's been a, quite the roller coaster ride. You got the Nova side; they've been upwards of ten thousand themselves lead. So. Earlier on in the game, and now it's uh, looking like that on the side of uh, the Dire, the Sad Frog Boys over here. Yeah, I mean, if you look at Potom, that, that's a support that now has an Ethereal Blade, Ags, Blink, Shibas. Yeah. <laughs> you have a, a fourth core on this Radiant lineup. Yeah, you do. And her, her level 25, the 100 plus leap attack speed. Something with that. So you're saying earlier, though, Rubik, I think you're mentioning a level 25. Yeah, so Rubik either gets massive cooldown reduction, which is very good on its own, and he has an Octarine to couple with it. So just this filthy amount of cooldown reduction, lowering his cooldown so much. His spell steal is a 1.2 second cooldown. <laughs> That's insane. But the alternative would have been Telekinesis. He could have literally changed where someone is positioned by, like, a full range auto attack. Oh, yeah. Huh. Yeah. I mean, he has the Octarine. Co yeah, I almost got Jesus He's sitting in the Roche pit. I see that, yeah. He's, he wanted to get it right there, but you see he pinged it out. 
But it's a little bit too dangerous. In comes the epicenter from the Sand King in the back. Got the Marotta follow up. Dago signs there and Slark. And Lone Trid is going to fall here as well. Again, he's only down for 60 seconds with the buyback. Slark buys back immediately, by the way. But you're right, the cheese, I believe, is still in there, in fact. Nick's Assassin in the background. He's going to end up going down here, most likely. And he will have a buyback, too. But that will be a dead gem. Or they'll lose the gem even. Double kill for the PA. And yep, Cheese is still there with new Roshan ready to go. Okay, so what happened there, PA had the cheese, no one had an open item slot on them, and she was a little scared that someone wouldn't clear an item slot up fast enough for her to grab the Aegis. So she threw the cheese on the ground. Uh, it ended up turning into an insane bait. <laughs> like, Kill baited Slark, yeah. really bad team play. That Slark was really hungry right there. You see that you hear the buybacks coming out though, so again, here we go, a big fight breaking out. Slark going on the background into the Phantom Assassin. Guardian Angel being popped though, and now Reinhardt here. On Slark, running away. Klinks opens. Klinks is dropping, though. Klinks just about dead. Yes, he goes down, but at what cost for the Slark? As Phantom Assassin trying to finish the job, cannot do so. The Shrine heals, kicking on in. Klinks buys back immediately with Marana, who had also been picked off. There's another Burl in the front grounds from Nyx Assassin, though, setting up position to take out Omni Knight. And now the Sand King, unless he gets a Burl Strike of sorts, a Sandstorm? No, the Mana Burn prevents anything from happening. Double kill for the Lone Druid, and... Well, Omni Knight's now dead for 80 seconds. No buyback for him. So it's just the back and forth swing in here. This the is pendulum. such a crazy game. And I'm not going to say it's because you have two teams that will potentially make the finals, you know, if they weren't paired against each other. But it, this is exciting, to say the least. <laughs> it's gone back and forth. It's been very sloppy at multiple parts. But what a game. Yeah, that's it, buybacks from both sides in so many situations, and this game is going to get really bloody, and the next fight is going to win the game. It's setting up a very entertaining finish for sure. Roshan being attempted, but now the focus is going to be breaking on a team fight back here. Mika uh, on that Klinx, actually, descending his ground with the BKB. Oh, meanwhile, Phantom Assassin, he takes out Sark in the background. Nyx Assassin goes down as well. Sark dead for two minutes. No buyback. Will they go for Roshan? They don't, they're kind of not sure what you they want the to do. Oh, they're you going for Roshan. Yeah, they're going to finish him off. It's going to be quick, but, I mean, Sark's staying dead. Obviously, Nyx is staying dead. This is probably, yeah, they just go right tier four here, I think. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So the finish, as expected, going to come down to a, to a pretty fun one at that. As Nova going to go for the death ball push now. No buybacks across the board. It's not often the buyback status looks like that on the chart. But they catch Lodger. That's going to be another no buyback if he dies. A Yule Scepter at the last second. Is it going to matter? No, it's not. He is staying dead. Granted, a little bit less time, but Rubik also going to get caught. He's trying to distract Nova. Going to take the game over Sad Frog Boys. Hell of a finish there. Big fight to do it in. Yeah, what a game, honestly, and to take you into day two of the event. Yeah, that's got to feel good. That's a, that's a good one to end on because I guarantee you both teams are burnt after that game. Oh, yeah. It's so hard to play a game that long and that close. Well, they did, and Nova obviously feeling the better after it. So Sad Frog Boys going to be sad, unfortunately, as the road will end here for them. But Nova, they're feeling good, moving on to day number two here with a round of 32 victory once again. So congratulations to them. But the cast continues.